Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating the art of living well, a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life at our simplified URL, tsll.co or the Simply Luxurious Life.com. There you'll find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and readers' favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 313th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we are beginning the new month of October. Autumn is in full swing here in Bend, and I have been enjoying so many excursions outdoors to soak in the beauty, to soak in the colors of the trees turning turning their beautiful reds and, and rusts and oranges and oh, the golden yellows as well as just absorb all this sunshine that, while fleeting, is just so nourishing. Norman and I went on our morning walk, came home, had a breakfast for our, or I should say my, weekly croissant, and am now sitting down to join you and talk about a book that spoke to me immediately upon learning about its author a couple of years ago. Today's episode is inspired by Victor E. Frankel's Man's Search for Meaning. And I'm going to share with you nine lessons taught, while there are many, many more, about the importance of finding meaning in our life. But before I get to today's content, we cannot forget the petite plaisirs. And yes, that is plural. I have two petite plaisirs for you this week. So stay tuned as I'll share them both at the end of today's episode. One will tickle your taste buds. Another will tickle your funny bone and also deepen your appreciation for building relationships, healthy, loving, kind relationships. All right. So again, the importance of finding meaning in life, nine lessons taught by Victor E. Frankl. I want to begin with a quote from the book. Man's search for meaning is the primary motivation in his life and not a secondary rationalization of instinctual drives. This meaning is unique and specific in that it must and can be fulfilled by him alone. Only then does it achieve a significance which will satisfy his own will to meaning. End quote. Throughout our conversation today, I'm going to be saying that phrase quite a bit, will to meaning. And if you are following along by looking at the show notes, you'll notice that will is always italicized. And this is Frankel's choice because there's emphasis on what exactly this means, the will to meaning, a conscious effort to find meaning in your life. And we'll break that down a bit more in our conversation. I also want to preface the pronoun choice here. He is using the term man in referencing human. So I'm using his words throughout our conversation when I share his quotes and the title. But while he chose that term at the time, as we know from historical use of verbiage and language, man was encompassing. However, that has changed over the years and we have learned many different 
ways to more clearly communicate and be inclusive. So let's talk first about the book. First published in Germany in 1946, Victor Emil Frankl's seminal work, Man's Search for Meaning, and the desire to write his first book, which was to be titled The Doctor and the Soul, An Introduction to Logotherapy, that book, his first book, largely gave him the will to live while being imprisoned at Auschwitz during World War II. Marrying psychology and philosophy, a primary focus of his work throughout his life, Frankel shares, quote, Certainly my deep desire to write this manuscript anew helped me to survive the rigors of the camps I was in, end quote. Now, with more than 16 million copies sold worldwide, Man's Search for Meaning continues to be a book to read, understand, and reread. While not having the opportunity to read it until now, I am grateful that at least I finally did read it. And I would like to share with you today nine lessons learned about the importance of finding meaning in our lives. Much of the premise of a simply luxurious life is centering our lives, ourselves, or perhaps a better word is grounding ourselves in priorities that marry what we can uniquely give, but also what the world desperately needs to progress and cultivate a more civil, loving, and peaceful place for not only ourselves, but future generations. At first, such a task given to each of us may sound ginormous and far too weighty a task. But when we drill down, ultimately, love, sincere love, being able to share our true selves and be accepted begins to create a harmony of contentment that cannot help but create a symphonic awareness grounded in a desire to live more peacefully and lovingly with each other. This may be too far reaching and some may contest it, but if my own life journey, which indeed is filled with good fortune and privilege beyond my choice or control, demonstrates when we have not found our meaning, when we are discontent, building healthy relationships is incredibly difficult and often fraught as while trying to make sense of our lack of purpose, we displace our pain onto others. So I wholeheartedly find worthwhile value in exploring what Viktor Frankl teaches in this book, and he has many others you can explore in writings, and I hope it will offer tools for you as well to tap into what gives you meaning and share it with not only the world, but yourself so that your every days may be full of contentment. With all of that said, let's take a look at the nine lessons of the importance of finding meaning in our lives. Number one, choose to pursue the will to meaning. Frankel defines the will to meaning as, quote, the striving to find a concrete meaning in personal existence, end quote. For when we find our individual will to meaning, the healing begins, Existential frustration subsides, neuroses find solutions, anxieties wane, and contentment soars. This is the key component. Find your will to meaning. It doesn't happen immediately upon asking. Sometimes we unconsciously already have it and know what it is without realizing we've found it, which is kind of backwards if we think about it. But it's there for us to discover, to be conscious to, to become aware of. I like the simple adage of if one keeps seeking or searching, the answers eventually come. Sometimes we have to realize we need to stop running up against obstacles and find a different path. I was reading um, one of my daily meditation books recently. They shared an analogy about salmon. And if you know anything about salmon, you know that after they, um, at the end of their season, they, they then swim back up river to spawn. And they instinctively have this compass knowing where to go and where that's going to be. And they have to swim up river. You think about that for a moment. Just think about a fish no matter how big or strong, having to move up a river in a lot of different currents and rapids 
and remembering that, and these are not small jaunts of a couple miles. This is sometimes a hundred and plus miles, if not more. And this comparison was saying the salmon stops fighting against something that's not open to them. And instead, where the water rushes through, which is ultimately going to be the most difficult to swim through because the current is strongest, they realize that's the only way to go through and up the river. So they have to figure out a way to be strong enough to get up that river because that's the only way. The obstacles that are slowing the current down are ultimately not going to let them go through them because they're firm, they're hard, they're solid, whether it's a rock or land or whatever. But they power through because that's the way. And I guess what I'm trying to impress upon you is just because it looks difficult, just because it's not something you know or don't understand yet, if it's open to you and something's calling you to swim through it, to explore it, to be curious about something just keeps calling you, explore it. Especially if you have knocked your head up against so many other obstacles And it's just not letting you make it happen. You can't force life to give you what you think you should have. Let it go and find your will to meaning in places you may not have expected. Simply another example, by no means with tragedy or stress that's beyond what anyone can handle, I use just my own profession. I didn't expect blogging to be something that I could do for a living, but man, have I found something that speaks to what I can somehow give in a way that's sincere and, and truly aligns with my temperament. But I would never have known that that avenue was open to me unless first other avenues kept shutting down And second, I kept looking and I just started to trust and take one step, do what I love, see what doors open without expectation, keep doing what I love, see what what doors and windows open without expectation and being appreciative and striving forward in a way that was sincere. So first lesson here is to pursue the will to meaning. Pursue it until you find it. Once you find it, keep embracing it. Number two, find your meaning, find your way forward. So this ties in with number one, because Frankel shares an anecdote of an American diplomat who came to Frankel's um, place of work in Vienna. Um, He was very discontent with his current career, this American diplomat, and He had been following for five years his former psychological analyst advice and things had not improved. They were continued, they continued, as he says, to be very unfruitful years. And this former psychological analyst claimed that this American diplomat's discontent came from the need to reconcile himself with his father as the analyst made a parallel with a father in the U.S. being a superior figure and see this gentleman was working for the American government. So he made the parallel with his discontent with his career, with the discontent of his father. And Frankel immediately uh, just, you know, it didn't, it didn't make sense necessarily to him. And so he explored it through logotherapy. And following only a few visits, the patient realized with clarity that his, quote, will to meaning was frustrated by his vocation, and he actually longed to be engaged in some other kind of work, as there was no reason for not giving up his profession and embarking on a different one. He did so with most gratifying results, end quote. Well, everyone's situation is going to be different. When you found your meaning, you've kind of found your roadmap. It's a more general roadmap. It's not going to give precise dates and precise things to do and precise outcomes. But what it will give you, because you feel it and you know it in your intuition or your gut, whatever you call it, is a contentment that is priceless. Follow that. Follow that. This had nothing to do with the man's father. This man simply did not enjoy his work. 
it wasn't satisfying to him. It didn't fulfill for him a meaning. That job obviously will fulfill a meaning for others. Let them have it and find your meaning and then find your way forward. And just as he went to someone to ask for help, you may need to go to someone to ask for help in clarifying what you cannot make sense of. And I've shared this before. I've been working with a counselor. It took a couple counselors to find the counselor that worked well for what I was needing, who I was, where I was in my journey. But having an objective voice is very helpful to help make sense of things. So that's number two. Find your meaning. Find your way forward. Number three. Nothing is wrong with you if you feel existential distress. In fact, you are heading in the right direction. Frankel points out, more so for practicing therapists, to not equate existential distress with mental disease. He asserts, it is the task of the therapist, rather, to pilot the patient through their existential crises of growth and development, end quote. So often in my own life journey, the distress of frustration by my career, my relationships, or lack thereof, and what I was meant to do with my finite days on earth felt as though it was a burden, not good fortune. Something was wrong with me, put that in air quotes, wrong, for not having figured out my life journey immediately, quickly, and feeling at ease. Thankfully, the opposite is actually true. All was well If you are in a place right now where you're very frustrated, you're in a place of discontent, you're distressed because you haven't or can't figure it out, you're actually moving in the right direction. All is well. The fact that you feel this discontent is helpful because it's going to help you find the right direction. Don't give up. I was listening to myself. I was acknowledging something didn't fit. What I was giving, what I was spending my time doing either wasn't enough or it wasn't aligned with my talents and what the world potentially needed. I want to bring you back to a post I wrote um, earlier this year. It was inspired by Jay Shetty's book, Think Like a Monk, and I shared nine ways to think like a monk, and he shares this idea of dharma. It's passion plus expertise plus usefulness. That is dharma. And in many ways, finding our dharma is to find our will to meaning. When you marry all three of those, Shetty points out, passion, your expertise, and your usefulness, you find what the world needs and what you can give and enjoy giving. And I will link that post on today's show notes because I found his book to be very insightful and also one that It presents itself as being helpful for you, but in essence, it's about contributing positively to the greater world while not forgetting about yourself. So number three is nothing is wrong with you if you feel existential distress. In fact, you are heading in the right direction. Number four, the unexpected gift of tension. Quote, what man actually needs is not a tensionless state but rather the striving and struggling for a worthwhile goal, a freely chosen task. What he needs is not the discharge of tension at any cost, but the call of a potential meaning waiting to be fulfilled by him. End quote. I put in bold, freely chosen. I chose to bold the phrase freely chosen because I find it to be an essential element to finding true contentment. If your life is charmed, yet you still feel discontent and frustration, yet society applauds, your family applauds, your friends cheer for what you are doing with your life, most likely you have unconsciously not chosen for yourself the life you are living, but rather have been steered by approval, expectation, and mores to take the steps and make the choices you have without truly acknowledging what you long for which leads me to the next item on the list. But first, welcoming tension. Let's talk about that for a moment. Welcoming tension in your life must be thoughtfully done. After all, unnecessary stress is harmful to our health. No, what Frankel means by stating that tension is healthy has everything to do with pursuing what gives you meaning. If you derive meaning, say, for example, from advocating for a cause, then 
the path forward will undoubtedly be fraught as you are striving for progress, but you strive forward anyway because it is your will to meaning. If you, for example, derive meaning from raising a family, nurturing your children as to give them their own wings with which to fly, the journey together will be a mingle of emotions, but you strive forward because it is your will to meaning. If you derive meaning from contributing through your chosen career path to improve the lives of other others, you navigate through the frustrations and the setbacks and hurdles because it is your will to meaning and you know why you are pursuing it. When the path we are on does not fulfill our will to meaning, similar to the anecdote of the American diplomat mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, then the tension becomes unhealthy. Then we must be frank with ourselves and find the courage to change course and bravely do so, not only for our own well-being, but for those we love and the world at large. Why? Because the world needs what you uniquely have to give. Figure out what that is and then begin giving what you discover. Your tension will be reduced to a healthy amount and your contentment will soar. So number four is the unexpected gift of tension. Number five, discover what you long for and find your contentment. The term logotherapy, I just want to spell that out so you can kind of visualize it, L-O-G-O therapy, as defined by Viktor E. Frankl, derives its meaning from the Greek root logos, which is defined as meaning. Logotherapy, quote, strives to find a meaning in one's life as the primary motivational force of man, end quote. Logotherapy opens itself up while including instinctual facts within the individual's unconscious. It also cares for existential realities, such as the potential meaning of his existence to be fulfilled as well as his will to meaning, end quote. In other words, logotherapy assists the patient to become aware of, quote, what he actually longs for in the depths of his being, end quote. Understanding the language of your true self can sometimes be difficult and take time, especially if we have suppressed it for some time. However, we are each capable of learning our language when we choose to be a student of ourselves. As I share in my about page, and I just want to share, I recently updated my about page to reflect more accurately and specifically what the Simply Luxurious Life is all about. I want to share with you a portion that remains the same as it did when I began blogging in 2009. While I valued and gave my all to teaching... In 2009, I finally acknowledged that something wasn't entirely being satiated by solely working in the classroom. Here is the excerpt from the About page. The Simply Luxurious Life came into fruition in 2009 when I realized the life I enjoy living, a life full of simplicity yet punctuated with everyday luxuries found even in the most routine of days, was something I wanted to explore more fully due to the immense contentment it brought into my life. In fact, I needed to explore it more intentionally because while many people didn't understand how I could live well and contentedly on the everyday income as a public school teacher, I retired, as you all know, in 2021 after 20 years, I had a curiosity for the world, especially the French culture, followed by my appreciation for the British countryside and their gardening wonderland that wasn't entirely being satiated by working in the classroom. And this is an example of our lives speaking to us. Thankfully, I listened and decided to share my discoveries, passions, and ideas so that they too could find their passion as a way to living a life full of true contentment by clearing out the clutter, figurative and literal, and bringing in the luxurious necessities to enliven and inspire each day, no matter what their income, age, location, or relationship status. So all of this is to say, when we find meaning, even if nobody else understands why such a path speaks to us and brings us to life, we have found the motivation of infinite energy, creativity, tenacity, and strength. I'm going to let you ponder that for a while. I would like to introduce you to the sponsors for today's show. 
and then I'll be back to share with you the remaining four items of lessons learned about the importance of finding meaning in one's life. When it comes to my socks, they must be comfortable and last. And Bomba socks do both, comfortable and long lasting. But that's just one reason why I love them. The other is the good I'm doing being a Bomba's customer. For every Bomba's item you buy, they donate an item to those experiencing homelessness. Bombas started by making socks after learning they're the number one most requested item in homeless shelters. Then they started making underwear and shirts too. From fabric to fit to feel, everything Bombas makes is made to feel good on everyone. I have been wearing their socks for over a year now, for walking, for taking our trail hikes, for even when I go skiing in the winter, and those socks are still with me. They're comfortable, they keep my foot warm, as warm as I need it to be based on the elements, And they are completely well-made and long-lasting. And get this, thanks to Bomba's customers, they've just donated their 50 millionth clothing item. That's 50 million brand new pairs of socks, underwear, and shirts given to those in need. They're so much more comfortable to have and so much more to give with Bomba's. As a simple, sophisticated listener, go get 20% off your first order at bombas.com slash sophisticate. That's bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash sophisticate for 20% off your first order. That's bombas.com slash sophisticate. The Simple Sophisticate is also sponsored by Thrive Cosmetics. Thrive Cosmetics products are made with clean, high-performance, skin-loving ingredients. Their clinically proven formulas not only highlight your best features, they actually improve your skin over time. All Thrive Cosmetics products are formulated without parabens, sulfates, and phthalates. Thrive Cosmetics has a bold mission that's bigger than beauty. For every product purchase, Thrive Cosmetics donates to help women thrive. For example, women emerging from homelessness, surviving domestic abuse, fighting cancer, and more. Having used their Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, which has more than 11,000 five-star reviews and is the winner of the Allure Best of Beauty 2020 award, I found that it was smudge-free, clump-free, and flake-free, which makes it exactly what I'm looking for. It's made with clean, nourishing ingredients that support longer, stronger, and healthier-looking lashes over time. Visit thrivecosmetics.com slash sophisticate for 15% off your first order. This is an exclusive offer only for Simple Sophisticate listeners. So be sure to visit Thrive Cosmetics, that's C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash sophisticate for 15% off your first order. Thrivecosmetics.com slash sophisticate. Is there something interfering with your happiness? Is there something preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, connect in a safe and private online environment that's also convenient. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. With licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, LGBTQ matters, family conflicts, self-esteem, trauma, sleep, you're sure to find what you need. Everything you share is confidential, and it's time for you to start living a happier life today. As a listener of the Simple Sophisticate podcast, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting the sponsor of our show today, betterhelp.com slash simple. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash simple. Last but not least, The Simple Sophisticate is sponsored by Woodstock Chimes. Did you know that Woodstock Chimes were the first wind chimes tuned to specific notes, changing the industry forever from looks pretty and makes noise to looks pretty and sounds amazing? Founder and owner Gary Kivstad is a Grammy Award winning professional musician and has created a company known for finely tuning musical instruments played by the wind. These chimes have been called musical works of art and are the world's favorite wind chime. Over 40 years in business, they have sold their chimes in 
all 50 states and around the world. Woodstock Chimes offers chimes tuned to various melodies and music scales, and each one is different and delightful. They also have decorative chimes, wind bells, gongs, fountains, and sun catchers to help you create tranquil spaces in your home or garden, and a line of personalized it chimes that are laser engraved with your own message prior to shipping. All of them make great gifts. You can listen to sound samples on the website and you'll even find wonderfully large, deep tone chimes that really make a statement in your entryway or gazebo. As a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to get 15% off by going to chimes.com and using the promo code SIMPLE. Go to chimes.com, the world's favorite wind chime, and use the code SIMPLE to get 15% off. Welcome back. Let's dive right back in to the final four items of, of understanding the importance of finding meaning in our lives. Number six, find your meaning and eradicate boredom. Frankel coins the term, quote, Sunday neuroses as, quote, that kind of depression which afflicts people who become aware of the lack of content in their lives when the rush of the busy week is over and the void within themselves becomes manifest, end quote. He goes on while speaking about the existential vacuum to share that without the will of meaning and with the improved automization of our 21st century, quote, many will not know what to do with all of their newly acquired free time, end quote, which is to say boredom, anxiety, distress, and lack of direction cause more solvable problems that he argues can be largely solved when we find our will to meaning. This is not to say you have to be busy every moment, pack your schedule with appointments. No, 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 no. In fact, I would argue it's the opposite. Or perhaps more accurately, it is a knowing what supports and nourishes your will to meaning and thereby finding comfort with your downtime that is part of your self-care and confidently engaging in your productive time when on task. So number six is if you're someone who finds yourself not knowing what to do with your time and you feel that you should be doing something more and so you fill your schedule up so full that you don't even have a moment to feel bad about not knowing what to do, give yourself a break, slow down and ask yourself and be honest with yourself, have you found your will to meaning? And if you haven't or if you haven't entirely, that's often where we are, it's a continuum, right? Slow down enough to listen to yourself. And then when you do find your meaning, those moments, those regular moments to rest, to tend to yourself and how and what you need, whatever's going on in your life, that is nourishing your meaning too. And that is a lot of what we talk about here on the blog and the and the podcast. It's more about quality than quantity. Surprise, surprise. And when you have clarity, it's easier to sit well with that pace and that structure. So number six, find your meaning, eradicate boredom. Number seven, your next best step toward meaning is what is best for you. Quote, The meaning of life differs from person to person, from day to day, and from hour to hour. What matters, therefore, is not the meaning of life in general, but rather the specific meaning of a person's life at a given moment. End quote. I found it helpful to note that Frankel directly advises not to search for an abstract meaning of life, but rather a concrete, quote, assignment which demands fulfillment, end quote. In other words, don't commodify yourself, but rather, what is it that you bring that is helpful and that you find fulfillment in giving? Quote, everyone's task is as unique as is his specific opportunity to implement it. So there are going to be specific things you're going to do and know that that is what you need to do. I think about my own journey and I think, okay, you know, I may have this mission statement, but what does that mean? So drilling down to what does that mean? Okay, it's about understanding that I'm going to 
I'm going to put a podcast out every other week. And for the first six years, I put out a podcast every single week. That's a concrete task. It required me to do research, to read, to do homework, to fully understand something that I'm going to then put into an episode so that readers and listeners can tune in and make sense of it and entertain ideas in a way that introduced a topic should they want to dive into it more in detail by picking up that particular book or books. So those are the concrete things he's talking about and those change. So I'm doing a different episode every other week. I've changed the schedule of the podcast, but those are the concrete things that will shift based on what's needed. Even though you might be guided by a more abstract idea, it's the tasks. That's what the next best step is. Those are going to be concrete. They're not going to be abstract. So in many ways, It's focusing on what Oprah talks about as just do the next best thing. What is the next best step? And I think when we, when we distill it down to something more simple in that regard, it's helpful and it's not so paralyzing. So that's number seven. Your next best step toward meaning is what is best for you. Number eight, find strength during times of suffering. Quote, When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Maybe you've heard that quote before, and now you know the source, if you didn't already, from Frankel, from this book, Man's Search for Meaning. So what does this mean? What are we going to, how are we going to make sense of this? Just as Frankel's own life exemplifies harnessing his will to meaning to survive the unthinkable tragedies and struggles during World War II, he writes, quote, In some way, suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds a meaning, such as the meaning of a sacrifice, end quote. However, and this is crucially important to absorb, he continues on and in the same section of the book to point out, quote, but let me make it perfectly clear that in no way is suffering necessary to find meaning. I only insist that meaning is possible even in spite of suffering, provided certainly that the suffering is unavoidable. And he italicized the necessary only when it's necessary, that being suffering. So that I think is very important to keep in mind. If you are in a situation that you cannot change, an everyday kind of common example would be you're in a relationship and you've communicated your needs to your partner and what you need cannot come from them. Either they can't give it to you, they choose not to give it to you, whatever it is, you have to change yourself. And what I don't, I don't mean to change yourself in a relationship. I mean, you might have to change the journey you're on. You might have to step away from the relationship. I'm not trying to simplify it, but I think that's an example that's less tragic filled. If we're speaking about Frankel's experience of the inhumanity that occurred during World War II, that might help understand what he's talking about. Because clearly you're going to be pained by having to leave or change a relationship that involves the two of you no longer being together. But if you can't change something, which means you can't change anything beyond yourself, then you may, for a more fulfilling life for both of you, have to change the future from what you expected. Then find the meaning in it to provide the fuel, the energy, the motivation to continue forward. But by no means should you have to suffer to find your meaning. That's number eight, finding strength during times of suffering. Number nine, our last point of our conversation today, hold yourself in the present fully for all the days of your life. Frankel writes that we must refrain from being pessimistic and instead be activistic when it comes to our human existence. That is to say, quote, the pessimist resembles a man who observes with fear and sadness that his wall calendar from which he daily tears a sheet grows thinner with each passing day. On the other hand, the person who attacks the problems of life 
effectively is like a man who removes each successive leaf from his calendar and files it neatly and carefully away with its predecessors after first having jotted down a few diary notes on the back. He can reflect with pride and joy on all the richness set down in these notes on all the life he has already lived to the fullest, end quote. Frankel goes on to suggest there is no need to envy the young because we have lived fully each of our days, holding ourselves in the present, motivated by our will to meaning and quote, instead of possibilities, have realities from our past experiences, not only the reality of work done and of love loved, but of sufferings bravely suffered, end quote. I think of when I read this passage, my first annotation was a Maury Schwartz insight his, because he too talks about youth and he talks about if I'm what age I am now, I am also the age of my past. I'm 38, I'm 12, I'm 25. I was those ages and I lived them fully. So now I can reflect back and savor knowing I lived them in the present. Just as happiness cannot be experienced in every moment, suffering cannot be wholly avoided when we find our will to meaning and let it guide us forward. However, by holding ourselves in the present moment for all the days of our lives, while we cannot avoid experiencing the loss of loved ones, we can love fully so that when we reflect, we are filled with joy and reminded of the riches of our lives, riches we, by bravely living well, engaging with our humanity, courageously stepping into what we discovered is our will of meaning, helped to bring forth into our lives and those we cared about and interacted with. So number nine is hold yourself in the present fully for all the days of your life. Upon learning about Victor E. Frankel's approach to therapy and perspective on the meaning of humans, I found an alignment that has unconsciously spoke to me to honor for decades. Although never making sense and not having the opportunity nor pursuing more intentionally philosophy courses in college, the ideas danced about in my head. Yet while I was frustrated by this unknown ideas or instincts, I don't know what it was, I wanted it to leave me alone because it was bothering me so much. But thankfully, those wanderings stayed and waited for me to make sense of them, to trust them. The world swirling around us via media, messaging, and our community at large can be deafening and confusing and conflicting, and it can hold us off course if we let it, the course of finding our true meaning. But when we understand that the feeling of frustration is actually a sign that we are hearing our inner voice, we can find peace or at least rest in peace. Because in that moment of aha, we can take a breath and continue to pursue the questions that keep bouncing around in our mind. Because eventually the answers come. We don't know when, we don't know what they'll be, but don't give up. Because if my own journey is any indication, it is a path that will lead you to everyday contentment. I do hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the podcast. I want to thank you for stopping by. It's been a pleasure being in your company. And I will provide a link to his book. There's paperback and hardback copies available as well as audio, which might be your preference if you're tuning into this show. And you can see and find the show notes at the Simply Luxurious Life.com slash podcast 313 or simply go to tsll.co slash podcast 313. I've provided a couple of similar posts and episodes that are similar vein of the topic we're talking about finding our true self, as well as how to reduce our stress, the unnecessary stress and how that is vital for good health. You can find those on the show notes as well. Now we have two petit plaisirs to get to, and I'll be right back to share with you those. So we have two petit plaisirs this week. One is a series, and I have mentioned it on the blog before. I mentioned it on the monthly cup of moments, but I felt it was definitely one to share with the podcast listeners, you as well, because it is well-written. It breaks so many tropes of comedy series and sports stories, 
And I just applaud it for breaking the norm. You probably already guessed what it is. This is Ted Lasso, the comedy series on Apple TV+. Plus. I tuned in to Ted Lasso just this summer. Now, the first season debuted last fall, and I heard rumblings about it, and it looked kind of cute and funny, and I just was like, no, I watched the first two episodes, and I didn't really do any research beforehand to understand what it was about, and of course, we have enough going on with the world, and this was back in the fall of last year, and I was, anyway, life sometimes does that, right? We're not present enough to appreciate something. So I stopped watching it when I saw some bullying going on in the locker room, and I don't think I was really paying attention to the buildup of that. And I just turned it off. I was like, I'm not watching any bullying in sports. I'm sick and tired of this. It's too, it's too typical of a sports show. I'm just done with it. It was my loss. But then I woke up and I turned it on again this summer. And oh my gosh, it breaks the trope of any sports show you have watched. The writing is thoughtfully done to change so many different stereotypes when it comes to sports, when it comes to coaching, when it comes to sexism, when it comes to Americans and and Brits as well. You have Jason Sudeikis, as you probably know, starring as Ted Lasso. They cleaned up at the Emmys a couple weeks ago, winning for best comedy, best actor, best supporting actor and actress. Best, there's so many bests. They won, I can't remember eight, nine, the writing was in there. So many different things on, yeah, it's, it, it, it's deserving. And it's set in Britain. It was inspired by a four minute ad that NBC sports created, um, to promote a new addition to their sports lineup. Um, and they hired Jason Sudeikis to be this fake British coach or he was going to be a, a become British coach of soccer football in Britain soccer to us Americans and he had formerly been a football coach and I'll provide the video of it I provided it this last Friday on the this and that it's just hilarious um and the ignorance of the sport of football in Britain and the similarities that really don't exist and the ones perhaps that do and we're not aware of um Anyway, that was eight years ago. And now you have Ted Lasso, the head coach of Richmond uh, Greyhounds. He is coaching a team. Many of the players, if not all of them, have um, had great success in soccer. So they know how to play the game of soccer. Some of them were actual professional soccer players. And I say soccer, meaning football in Britain. And, uh, so they do have quite a bit of soccer, impressive soccer scenes, but it's they're breaking the trope of the tough coach. The coach is the tough person who doesn't let you show any emotions beyond what is acceptable in a particular stereotypical locker room. And Jason Sudeikis emphasizes the importance of relationships and many coaching programs, actual coaching programs, many leadership programs have actually begun to model and teach some of the different characteristics that he embodies in this show. Um, So that I think is a lovely benefit or, or effect of what this show is presenting. The cast is lovely as well. Um, Primarily all British actors Um, Hannah Waddingham plays the owner of the team. She won for best actress, um, in a supporting role and the strength of the female actors in their, their roles. I appreciate as well. Again, speaking to the value and importance of kindness, of considering human beings, regardless of gender, having emotions of all sorts and all kinds and establishing and building relationships through seeing the humanness in each other. And of course, it doesn't hurt that there is tea involved and you're in London. <laughs> and and uh, for Anglophiles, you will enjoy that part as well. And you're in pubs and all that fun stuff. And it is, it, there, are, there are cuss words, there are swear words in this. But that's part of, you know, including the culture of sports and then shifting the direction, shifting the storyline. Now, some fans of the show don't like the second season as much because they think it went too soft. In my opinion, I wholeheartedly disagree. I think 
we know the characters better and we're understanding their storylines more intensely. And I think that is largely the goal of the show is to show the humanness of all of these characters. So I will let you be the judge of that. And if you love Jason Sudeikis from SNL, you're going to appreciate some of the extras that he brings into um, the scenes. The last episode that I just watched, um, there's um, there's only one more episode in season two, and that will air this coming Friday. Um, he brings in a bunch of the different things he probably was able to do in his impromptu circuit and impromptu presentations. They were doing a, a choreographed dance dance to um, a pop a pop song from the <laughs> from the early aughts, and the soccer players were dancing to that wonderfully choreographed. But it just adds such a different depth of humor um, along with the storyline. So here is the trailer to season two of Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso welcome wagon has arrived. Ted! So, you're heavily favoured this weekend. You think this will end your embarrassing streak of draws? Lloyd, I've never been embarrassed about having streaks in my draws. You know, it's all part of growing up. I got a question for you. Has a team guy like us ever won the whole chimichanga? No, for 40 years. Oh! No, you don't come through here, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I got you. It's like so, Dukes of Hazards. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, y'all probably no, call it the no. Earls of Risk over here. We've got work to do. It's time for these young fellas to meet that guy. Oh no, Vanessa. Hi, you little turd birds. Start touching your toes. They touch each other's toes. What? what? How long was I have? Not as long as last time, but nobody was hurt. Okay. People saying there's something wrong with us. Not the way I see it. I believe in communism. Rom communism, that is. If Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan can go through some heartfelt struggles and still end up happy, then so can we. This is our turn to make history, and I believe we're gonna do just that. To the family we're born with, and to families who make along the way. To Richmond! Under pressure. All right, let's go kick their butts. Butts on three. Works for me. One, two, three. Butts! So if you're looking for a wonderful comedy to watch, to take you away to Britain, to maybe just uh, add a breath of lightness to your day, I highly recommend tuning into Ted Lasso and his biscuits that he brings into Rebecca the owner of the team. That recipe is also on the show notes if you want to make it for yourself. I'll be making it later this week. All right, our second, our second petit plaisir, speaking of food, is an appetizer I highly recommend. And it is so simple and it just fits fall. But I would have it any time of the year. Um, It is sauteed oyster mushrooms. That's it sauteed oyster mushrooms. But it's the special ingredient that makes it so deliciously special. I will provide the recipe for this on the show notes. I've provided a picture as well. But if you can get your hands on oyster mushrooms, I just love the texture of these. They're the blue or the white, either one. You you chop them up, you saute them in unsalted butter. Some people might want to do salted butter because you're going to add salt to the pan anyway. It's up to you. So you're just sauteing them down. Um, This will be about five or so minutes. Just keep an eye on it. You can stir it from time to time. As they get down to almost the consistency you want of having been completely sauteed, add about two tablespoons. It depends on how many mushrooms you have, of course. I usually get three handfuls of mushrooms. Add about two to three tablespoons of rice flour. What this is going to do is add a lovely, obviously new texture. So you have new texture added, but also a lovely nuttiness to your dish. Keep cooking it over medium heat. You might want to add some more butter to make sure the pan allows the mushrooms to move around. And 
And you might add even more flour after the initial two to three tablespoons have been absorbed. And when the mushrooms are entirely cooked through and all the flour has been absorbed, then serve it. Sprinkle it with chopped up fresh flat leaf parsley. And that is it. It is so good. I pair it with a nice glass of white wine. And that relaxes me and prepares me for the next dish of the entree, whatever that might be. But in a matter of 10 minutes, if not even that, you can have your appetizer. So sauteed oyster mushrooms. Highly recommend it. I'll provide a link to the recipe on today's show notes. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisirs, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode, where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, before we wrap up, I want to take a moment to thank a listener who shared a fantastically kind and detailed review of why they enjoy the show. This is from Janet Nicole, gave five stars to the show, discovered a hidden treasure. I have recently discovered Shannon Abel's and the beautiful and gentle world she has created, inviting all those looking for a quiet, nurturing, yet exciting and stimulating environment to visit. No, contentedly immerse in podcasts, books, newsletters, cooking shows, videos, book reviews, etc. All exude Shannon's joie de vivre. Merci, Shannon. Well, merci to you, Janet. Thank you so much for taking the time to share such a detailed and kind review. And if you too enjoy this show, please share a review or simply rank it. And that will introduce new listeners to this show and what they'll discover when they tune in. The show has been at it for over eight years, and I'm learning a lot along the way, polishing up my French. I know I have a long ways to go, but it is about my love of France and its culture, not my perfect French that keeps me inspired to continue to share inspiring ways to welcome the French culture as well as the British culture into your everydays. I hope you have a beautiful first week in October. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, be sure to pick up my first two books. Each are available in hardback, paperback, ebook, and at Audible for audio listening. The first is titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life and the second Living the Simply Luxurious Life. And look for a third book to be released in the spring of 2022. Readers can now join the more intimate Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which provides ad-free unlimited reading and access to exclusive content such as each month's A Cup of Moments video chat, tours of my home, Le Papillon, the regular monthly post, What Made Me Smile, and Saturday Ponderings, as well as the opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during French and British weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, and the cooking show, as well as receive exclusive news and an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free monthly newsletter, which arrives on the last day of each month. And there's a weekly newsletter, a favorite of listeners and readers, which is also free and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a cup of morning coffee and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Thank you for tuning in today and look for two new episodes of this podcast each month on the first and third of Monday. To be alerted to new episodes and when they become available, follow on Instagram, the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, and only the news about this show will be shared. Until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.